I still can feel the moment my grandmother kissed me goodbye 28 years ago. I had no idea that it would be the last day I would ever see, I would ever see her. You see, my parents left everything behind in Bangladesh and came to America in 1994 with just $10 and a dream of a better future for their children. After coming to America, six members of my family stayed in a very small seven by 10 foot room with one single twin bed in New York City. We could not even afford a slice of pizza. But my dad worked really hard selling newspapers on the streets of New York City and eventually managed to rent a one bedroom apartment for $600 per month in the Bronx. We were overjoyed with our new home and I was so excited to start school. Before going to school, I wanted to look beautiful just like my grandmother. So I covered my head with the hijab, just like this one I have on my head right now. Let me ask you a question. How many of you are familiar with the word hijab and what it signifies? Please raise your hand. Great to know, thank you. Well, in simple terms, hijab is an Islamic scarf worn by Muslim women to cover the head, neck, chest, sometimes the face, along with long and loose attire. As an 11-year-old little girl, I would walk 15 to 20 minutes to and from school every day with my hijab on, passing all the awkward looks and whispers. Once I reached school, I found myself to be the only one wearing the hijab. I did not speak a word of English. But understanding how others feel about you does not require to know the language. It all came down to feelings. I felt every obvious and subtle stare, cold shoulder, whisper, name calling, and laughter behind my back. Slowly, the abuse became physical and unbearable. I no longer felt safe going to school, but I forced myself to continue as I loved learning and did not want to disregard my parents' sacrifice or shadow their American dreams. The discrimination followed me to high school. Now, I was known as Batman, Ninja, and Mother Teresa. Once a group of students surrounded me outside the school to spit at me for no apparent reason other than wearing my hijab. Another time, a student waited outside my classroom to pull off my hijab. Being a freshman, I was terrified. But the most terrifying moments were in the locker room where I was shoved against the lockers and caught called abusive names for looking different. This sort of bullying continued for four years. I wanted to drop out of high school, but I couldn't because I wanted to make my parents proud and pursue college. After starting college, 9-11 took place. Now, I found myself being chased down the streets of New York City and labeled as terrorist and Osama bin Laden for being a visibly Muslim woman. I remember going to a drugstore to buy a simple toothpaste with my hijab on. And this elderly woman looked at me and called me Osama bin Laden. I was in shock. Her words were hurtful and hateful. I remember walking back home with my head down, internalizing her words as a young woman. People refused to sit next to me on the trains. I felt like an outcast in society. I felt like an alien from a different planet simply because I wore the hijab. 
After graduating from college, I was never even offered a job interview. So instead, I started an online business to sell hijab without having any business background. Honestly speaking, I was terrible at selling products. <laughs> but I loved and enjoyed connecting with others. So I asked women to share their hijab experience and struggles with me on my business Facebook page. One day, I received a message from a 14-year-old girl from the UK. She told me her classmates forcefully removed her hijab and spat at her. Her story resonated with me and gave me a flashback to my high school years. At that very moment, I realized I wasn't the only one who was facing discrimination for wearing the hijab. But my sisters in different parts of the world were being discriminated against both verbally and physically for wearing the hijab as well. I decided I wanted to help, but I didn't know how. Then I thought, what if I asked women from all walks of life to walk in my shoes for one day by wearing the hijab? Perhaps then the world would have a better understanding of the discrimination felt by those of us who wear the hijab. That idea marinated in my head for the next three years. I would wake up in the middle of the night and tell myself that I must do something about it. But I was too scared as I was just one person without any real resources. One day, I gathered all of my courage, putting aside my fear, expecting anything. I created a Facebook page called World Hijab Day, then posted an invitation for women from all over the world to wear the hijab on February 1st, 2013. Within a week or so, Women from 67 countries heard my call. I remember a BBC reporter reaching out to me for an interview, and I have no idea what I said to her because I was so nervous. <laughs> Before I knew it, a movement had begun. By 2014, our monthly reach on social media was 44 million people. World Hijab Day became a trending topic on social media in 2015. February 1st was recognized as World Hijab Day by Time Magazine's calendar in 2016. By 2017, World Hijab Day was covered by international news media, including but not limited to CNN, Time Magazine, The Times, and it secured a front page coverage by the Irish Times. In 2018, World Hijab Day acquired nonprofit status. Tech giants like Meta, the parent company of Facebook and Instagram, helped celebrate the 10th annual World Hijab Day on February 1st, 2022, and amplified its message. Companies like American Airlines commemorated World Hijab Day in order to normalize the hijab in the workplace. And I am very grateful to have the states of New York and Michigan, the city of Gainesville, Florida, and the House of Representatives of Philippines recognize World Hijab Day through passing resolutions. On February 1st, all people, individually, collectively, from every faith, have the opportunity to understand the most misunderstood piece of fabric in the world. This piece of fabric is so misunderstood that there are currently government-imposed restrictions in many countries around the world, including hijab bans in France, parts of India, Russia, Germany, and Quebec, Canada. Why is this piece of fabric so misunderstood. 
Well, I believe it all comes down to perception. To the viewer, the hijab may just be a piece of cloth, but is often stereotyped as a symbol of oppression. However, to those of us who wear the hijab, it's more than just a headscarf and far from oppression. It represents progression. To some, it's an outward expression of their inner faith. To others, it represents identity and modesty. And many women feel liberated and empowered, not having to constantly strive to live up to society's standard of beauty. Many women find peace and protection in hijab. One non-Muslim World Hijab Day participant who never wore the hijab before wrote, to my surprise, the veil was strangely liberating, an unapologetic form of self-expression. <coughs> Personally, the hijab is part of my devotion to my faith. It reminds me to be the best version of myself and be of service to others. Holding onto this hijab means so much to me than ever before because it represents my identity as a proud, proud Muslim woman. We cannot, we should not have to give up our identity simply because of negative perceptions by others. If we succumb to the pressure, it will take away our basic rights and freedoms to live according to our own beliefs. In life, I learned that when we go through pain and struggles, we have two choices. Either we fall victim to our circumstances and give away our power, or we rise above our pain and turn struggles into strength, wounds into wisdom, and pain into power. By keeping hope and courage alive, we can overcome any obstacles in life. Let our hope and faith be bigger than our fear to conquer the unthinkable in life. I hope you will join me on February 1st every year by wearing a headscarf in solidarity with Muslim women around the world. Your participation and support will help dismantle bigotry, discrimination, and prejudice against those of us who wear the hijab. I fully believe that it is only when we walk in the shoes of others that we can truly understand and appreciate their struggles and values. Together, we can make our world respectful, understanding, and peaceful. Thank you very much.